statement? Yeah, appreciate everybody coming out today. I know it's a busy time of year, lots going on, so appreciate your attendance. Obviously, the biggest uh, news and most important thing today um, is the passing of somebody dear to all of us and just a legend. Uh, you know, Coolidge Ball was not only one of the best players to play at the school, one of the best people uh, to go to this university. He was really a trailblazer and a pioneer. I had the pleasure of meeting him briefly uh, around the time that we accepted the job and uh, was really looking forward to developing a friendship. But simply stated, he's done so much for not only Ole Miss basketball, but the athletic department, the university, the town, this part of the state, the state. Uh, he's just a legend. So um, on behalf of everybody, in our basketball program. We just want to extend our sympathies to his wife, his children, his grandchildren, um, and obviously look forward to just celebrating his life. And uh, so that's the most important thing today. And um, we appreciate you guys giving us the time. In terms of basketball, it's an exciting time of year for all of us involved uh, in the sport. Uh, second week of school, first week of our fall kind of preseason practices. Um, I want to thank everybody and just really for your patience since this spring getting a job. Um, we take a lot of pride in, in, in getting our players' stories out there. I think the most important thing, the biggest part in college basketball is our players. I know our fan base is, is ready to connect with this year's team. Uh, job transitions, coaching changes are hard, so we appreciate everybody's patience, but um, we're excited. And so today, these two guys to my left, I know. Um, they're looking forward to getting not only their story, but our team stories out there. So um, I'll step aside and give uh, break one of the mics and uh, give these guys some time today to answer any questions you have. Uh, Mr. I appreciate y'all uh, for being here. Appreciate y'all for being here. Um, it's been a long summer. It's been a great one. Obviously, we've been grinding, getting after it, um, and just coming together as a team, obviously, as the two returners. Um, just trying to get this group of guys, this new group of guys and coaching staff all gelling together. Um, and that's when Coach Beer have been, uh, been focusing on. Obviously, like he says, the biggest thing we're fighting is time. So um, we're just trying to grind each and every day. No, I appreciate everybody for coming out. Um, just since day one, we've all came into this whole uh, process with this team. We just came in with one mindset, and that's to win. You know, since we started summer workouts, you know, everybody done had the same – Work at it, everybody been going hard, and we're looking forward to a great season. Matt, I don't think we've talked to you since uh, you entered the draft and withdrew your name and whatnot. Can you take us through that process and what made you want to come back and be part of this? Um, so when I initially decided to, uh, decided to make that decision, you know, I sat out and talked to Coach Beard, and um, he affirmed to me that he was going to be with me throughout the whole process. You know, and I really appreciate him for that. That was another big reason why I came back. Um, Just off the feedback, you know, the feedback was great. You know, coming to this season, they just want to be, see me be, they want to see me be more efficient. So, you know, Coach Beard knows that, you know, and he puts me in positions. He put me in the position and in the team position to be as successful as we can. Kind of building off that, just on the flip side of that, with that feedback that was given, what were some of the positives that, you know, they were able to share with you from that whole process? Um, just going through the workouts, they liked my athleticism and just the way I could shoot. But, you know, they wanted my numbers to reflect what they saw. That was a big thing. Having been back, how has the summer just been for you and, and trying to work on maybe the feedback you got and, and just mesh these, these new guys that are here? Um, summer's been great. You know, we got some people that already played in this league. Myself, Jamin, of course, Al Flanagan from Auburn, you know. So we know what we need. We know what we need to do. We know what we need to do to be successful. So that's why we just come in every day and compete as hard as we can because we all have the same mindset. Kind of on out. Just what have you seen from him now that y'all are here and practicing together, working out together? What's he kind of bring to y'all? A uh, dynamic player. You know, a player that can play inside out, a downhill player, a playmaker. You know, he's just he's a great all around player. Obviously, some years have passed since you first arrived on campus and all that. From where you stand now to the moment that you first arrived on campus, where do you see yourself either as a different person, as a different basketball player? This you guy's not like Rick, really. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just for Matt. Oh, no, yeah, both guys. Sorry. Um, it's about <laughs> but um, since since I first got here, wow. Um, so when I first came in freshman year, it was definitely is there have been changes, you know, changes each year. You know, I've been able to get no I've been able to get along with a different group of guys each year. You know, Jamie joined me two years ago. 
I'm blissful for that. But just as a player, you know, I've, I've become a more dynamic player. And just as a person, you know, the Ole Miss community just has helped me grow on and off the court. Jamie, it looked like, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it, it looked like your game was kind of starting to take off late last season, like you were kind of really getting comfortable in SEC play and that kind of thing. Is that your reflection as well? And then how do you kind of build on that moving forward? Oh, for sure. It's just more about preparation for me um, and just continue to grind. You know, everybody has different paths, so mine was obviously different, um, and it's and it still continuing to grow. Um, obviously, I feel like this this year I have a great great opportunity to be a, around a great group of guys and great coaching staff that allows me to win, and that's something that I've been looking forward to do. For, for both of you guys, I guess, how would you kind of compare, obviously it's early, but compare and contrast what you're going to be asked to do in your roles this year compared to maybe what you've done here previously? You know, just be a winner. Uh, each and every day, obviously, you're going to treat each day as its own, and you're going to try to wake up and win the day, and that's all that I'm focusing on. And being more of a leader, of, of verbal, but also knowing with my actions. Um, obviously, coach always emphasizes I'm always making sure that I'm good, but what about the other guys? So that's something I'm working on and, and continue to do. And I'm actually not working on it. I'm doing it. Uh, and just having guys like Matt to the left of me, it, it, I'm looking forward to it. Jim, what was your process in deciding to come back? Um, really, it was just – it was a quick process, obviously, um, with the whole decision of staying. Um, obviously, as soon as the season was over, I'm like, I kind of had to need to get a clear head. So, entering the portal, I didn't officially enter the portal. Just wanted to see where everything would go. Um, but other than that, obviously, I love Ole Miss. I love Mississippi. And there's no, no doubt that I was looking for a culture that is used to winning. And the coaching staff that Coach Beard has brought in, it, they do that. It's a culture something you can feel already. For sure, day one. Day one, and, and that's why the first conversation that me and Coach Beard had, I felt the energy right away. Uh, you, like you said, you were here in, the, in that transition day one with, with Coach Beard and his staff. Just what has y'all's relationship been like? Felt like y'all kind of the first two to click in terms of making that decision of what you wanted to do, go stay, and just how has that kind of grown from, from March to now? Most definitely. Well, it all just goes down to us being honest with each other um, and, and knowing the path that we're going to take and, we're, and the road that we're on right now. Obviously, it's not going to be easy, but we're both dedicated to do it, and I'm glad to be beside him. All right, you first. Uh, Matt, you talked about, you know, getting some feedback, wanting to see some more efficiency. What does that mean for you in terms of shot selection? Is it different shots? Is it fewer shots? How, how do you kind of approach that? <laughs> Open shots <laughs> is the best way to put it. And Coach, uh, I appreciate Coach Beard, his message to me, you know, just through the whole process. Uh, he told me he's coming in with one thing on, and that's to win year one. So, I mean, he's brought in a great group of guys that's going to help me get open shots, you know, and I'm going to get them open shots. So, you know, we just pick it back off each other to make each other better. This is kind of a question for both of you guys, but obviously, you know, new head coach, new coaching staff, but with Wayne Case staying on the staff and getting you all through kind of that, that tough time last year, um, but, you know, for the coaching changes, what has he meant to both of you guys since you all arrived here? He's a great human being. Uh, he's somebody who has the best positive energy that I've been around. Um, you know, he's somebody that's always going to smile. So just having him around the, around for the long run is, has been great. Obviously, he keeps you with a great upbringing. So just having him around has been great. Uh, Coach Case, many people may not know, but he was actually my recruiter out of high school. So me and his relationship is is a lot different than others. You know, I have a, I have a lot of love for Coach Case. You know, he's all, like Jamin said, he's always positive. I've, in my all my years of knowing him, I've never seen him be negative. And that's even when he was being the head coach. It's just he, whenever you need somebody to be positive and to cheer somebody up, Coach Case is that person. Chris, have you gotten word on uh, NCAA waivers on the on CSA and Murray? No, no word. Uh, all that stuff's in the process. Difficult is that, or at all, to sort of not knowing that? And obviously, those would be, I would guess, two pretty big parts of your team if, if they were eligible. It's a challenge, uh, but it's no different than any other day or any other week or any other season. Uh, there's challenges everywhere. Um, but yeah, putting together a team and 
um, similar to some years, you know, do you redshirt this player? Is he going to play? Or how's this going to respond? Is this guy going to respond to coming off an injury and things like that? So um, it's not uncharted waters. We've kind of been here before, uh, but it is a challenge. In addition to John Riley being added to your staff, you brought Bob, Bob Dunwald over from Texas as well. With all the experience, it seems like every level of basketball that he has, just kind of what's been your experience with just coaching alongside him and what do you feel like, you know, how big was that in hindsight? Yeah, we got a we got a great staff. Um, there's other really good staffs in college basketball, and uh, we don't think there's um, one that is better than ours. Um, you know, a lot of talented, experienced uh, people, teachers, coaches. Uh, but I think the most important thing to me was do the pieces fit. You know, very similar in putting together a team. You can stock stockpile a lot of special talent, but in a team sport. They got to be able to play together. Coaching staff's no different. So, um, again, we just got a lot of guys. I think the the kind of personally uh, cool thing, and we think it could be an advantage. We in, we intend to make an advantage is that um, that we've all worked together before, and so um, we haven't had to invest the normal time in terms of kind of getting to know people. The relationships were kind of set, and uh, we did that by design to give us give ourselves the best chance. Bob specifically. Um, is, is, you know, born to be a coach. His dad was one of the best college basketball coaches, Coach Donald and, and several Hall of Fames. Um, and Bob's just got great experience. Started his career in the NBA. Uh, he's been a head coach the majority of his career uh, in professional basketball, including, you know, he was the head coach of the Chinese national team in the Olympics, Coach Yao Ming. So two different stints in the NBA and um, made it, made a decision to try to get back to the States and coaching college a few years ago uh, with his wife and two young sons. And uh, we've been blessed to have Bob in the organization for the last couple of years. He's he's a basketball guy, great teacher. So you hit the ground running in terms of recruiting and trying to keep you know what you had here and hitting the trench report on the recruit trail. Just how do you feel about the makeup of this team, top to bottom, just entering this season? Yeah, I mean, it's almost uh, September. I You know, I got to feel good now. So this um, – Obviously, recruiting never stops, um, but right now our roster is intact. So uh, we had 16 players uh, at practice this morning, and um, you know there's 16 guys that I believe in. And um, you know, first step is kind of believing in somebody. Then the next step, which is a, a big one, is is trusting guys. I, I don't trust all 16 guys yet, but I believe in them, and I can see what each of them could be, and what we could be together. Um, but yeah, our, our team's a combination of three groups, as you guys know, the returning players, five players that uh, played under Kermit. Um, I think of what, six transfers, uh, which gives us some experience. Um, the idea here is to be competitive early. Um, and then we were blessed to get some freshmen in kind of an extreme situation, getting the job late. Um, and I really want to thank Kermit again, too. Coach Davis is a friend of mine, and um, he really helped us in the transition because I know he cares about you know his former players and he cares about Ole Miss. How high of a priority was it for you to get Matt and Jamin back and on board? Yeah, I mean, um, the biggest priority was to you know try to have great talent on the roster um, with character and experience to give us a chance to compete. And so um, – in terms of those two guys, you know, that's where it all starts. It's a talent-based business. Um, I, I love both those guys. Um, I love their families. Uh, I remember vividly the first time I met both of them, kind of different situations. But um, both guys told me the truth from day one. Again, coaching changes are hard. Uh, they're mentally hard. Everybody's a little tired, banged up, lots of things going on. Those guys are just in it a season. Um, but both guys were great, and their families were great. And so um, – it really started kind of just as people. You know, I enjoyed being around them. Then as we started evaluating and making calls and had a chance to watch them play a lot, you know, it became apparent that these are two guys we would love to kind of build this thing around in a lot of ways. So those two guys could have been in any other school in the country and we would have recruited them. Um, we were just blessed to have them here. Chris, I don't mean to harp on the waiver thing, but have, have you guys gotten a timeline or anything on that at all? Any feedback on, on – what that situation, when that might be resolved? No, I don't have specifics. Uh, the, the way I always do things, guys, is I'll tell you when I know. Um, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about how to play games. You know, like we have information, we'll tell you. Uh, the NCA has come out with a couple kind of generic things in terms of 
um, you know, potential time frames and things like that. Uh, but as we sit here today, I don't have many details. And early going, what have you seen kind of out of Rashad in the workouts y'all been able to do uh, this summer since he's been here? Yeah, Rashad Marshall is a talented uh, young player. Um, had some success in high school, both individually and impacted team success. Um, he's a guy, too, a lot like Brake and Matt that I really kind of just enjoyed getting to know when I first met him. A lot of respect for him, his mother, his family, his high school coach. Um, you know, I believe in Rashad. He's a talented guy. He's, he's got kind of a reputation in high school basketball of being kind of, of a big, um, but I don't view him as a big. I view him as a player. Um, he's more physically strong um, than most kids his age, so he's able to do some things around the basket. Um, but I think his game will translate to being on play all over the floor, which ultimately you know, is what it will take for him to be a really good player for us and in the SEC and, and to be a pro one day. You know, he's about 6'8", but he plays bigger than that because of his physicality. And uh, just like all freshmen, it's been a huge adjustment for him. But I was really proud of him. You know, he made, a, uh, I think, a, two really good grades this summer, uh, including an A in his last class this summer. And he's currently in, you know, second week of school. I think he's in 15 hours. He's doing well there. He's, um, you know, just kind of a lot, lot more discipline in college, um, and he's adapting to it. And so, like most young guys, you know, he, the consistency is not there yet. But on any given day, you know, he's one of the best players on the floor. So, um, as he gets consistent, I think he'll have a chance to compete as a freshman. Obviously, culture being the big tagline of you know your team's team building efforts, kind of especially kind of early on and all that. But do you find it a little bit more challenging now that all that all but five players are new on the scene and haven't played with each other before? And if so, what's that challenge kind of been like? Yeah, it's always been challenging, but uh, to me, in my opinion, it just kind of depends on where you're at with the journey. And um, you know, when you start a program or you build one, and you're basically building the culture. Um, that was what this summer was really all about. More important than any assist or jump stop or defensive rebound was, you know, we're here. What are we all about? What's our identity? What are our core values? What is our culture? Kind of this buzzword. Um, you know, we were doing culture way back when no one else was talking about culture. So it's, it's just who we are. And it's no different than the other program. Uh, these are, this is our plan to win. This is our plan to win off the court. These are things we believe in. Um, so, the challenge is, you know, we're still kind of in that stage of building it um, and we're starting to defend it. And a little bit of an advantage, I guess, once you get it, you got players returning, staff returning, but it's still, uh, you know, defending it is a day-to-day -day -day job. And so it's not like just once you build it, it just runs. I mean, you got to build it, you got to make sure it's solid, then you got to defend it every day. So um, I think everybody gets a challenge this time of year. I mean, even if you have every player coming back on a team, which is really rare in college basketball now, it's still every every season's a new journey. Um, so for us, yeah, we're fighting time. I think Brake said it best. I always thought the, you know, first thing you gotta do when you get a job is 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 get some talent. And I, I do think we have enough talent to compete. And so now we are competing against time because uh, we're competing against people that have been together longer than us. So we just try to get done more on a Monday than the next guy gets done in a Monday and Tuesday. And we try to get done more in one hour than maybe the opponent's getting done in two hours. And so it's it's really that specific. It sounds simple, um, but it's a lot more difficult to execute, but that's our plan. You know, red shirt last year, where do you kind of see Robert's role or kind of fitting into this team this year? Yeah, um, again, I like Rob. He's kind of like a broken record, but it's it's true. I like these guys. I really do. I enjoyed getting up in the morning, being around these guys. They're all good people, good families. And so, um, you know, Rob's got an identity. Uh, a lot of talented young guys, you can't really tell. Like, you know, what are you? Are you a shooter? Are you a defensive player? You, uh, Rob, you know, is the first to tell you, and I agree, he's a tough guy. And uh, we, we don't use that word tough a lot. You know, we don't say it unless we really mean it. But Rob has a physicality about him. He has kind of a mental toughness about him. Doesn't get too high or too low. He loves to compete. Um, he's had some adversity early in his college career. You know, I think he was a little bit banged up last year. I think that contributed to Coach Davis's decision to redshirt him, and he kind of got better throughout the year. And that's uh, my understanding. He was playing really well in practice by the end of the year, but they didn't want to waste his year, which obviously is a smart decision. Um, but yeah, there could be a role as a redshirt freshman for Rob. He brings a physicality and kind of a toughness and a consistency um, uh, that, that we need. 
kind of a two-part question. How have you been received on the recruiting trail? I know you can't talk specifics, but just in general. And then in your ideal world, in this era of college basketball, do you build mostly with high school guys, or are you pretty portal dependent? Yeah, first of all, um, it's been it's been great. I mean, Ole Miss has a lot of tradition. Um, you know, it, it might not have been consistent, um, but when you look back at the the history of this program, and I know we're going to do a lot to honor that history this year with the Tad Pad game, Coach Evans coming back, and so many other things. Like it's real, and when you get out there in the basketball circles, um, it's you know you, you always can almost always can find a connection. You know, whether somebody knew somebody played at Ole Miss or knew this player or knew this coach. So we have a lot of history and we, we play off on that. Um, I think the best players want to play in the best leagues in college basketball and the SEC is, is no question one of those leagues. Uh, the best players want to play in great facilities and we are, we are in one of the best arenas in college basketball right now. We all know that. So, And there's a commitment here. Um, Oxford is a great town. Ole Miss is a great university. It's a great state. So I think we've We've been perceived well. Um, you know, there hasn't been one person not take our call. You know, I'll leave it at that. And uh, recruit, recruiting is going well. Second part of that question, what was it? In your ideal world, in terms of roster building in this era, is it predominantly high school guys? Is it is it a lot of portal? Is it a mix? Yeah, definitely a mixture. But I don't think anybody has a formula. I think, uh, you know, I've always been interested in, in, in the football coaches and football model. It's kind of a hobby of mine. Some of my best coach friends have been football coaches, and I know it's much more of a of a structure, having depth at each position and uh, the, the classes and the years. But, you know, I, in my opinion, college basketball now is just like roster management. You know, like ball's going to go up on November 6th, and we intend to have one of those teams that can compete. And then when the ball goes up next year on November 6th or 7th, we again – plan on having one of those teams to compete so um, in a perfect world which doesn't exist yeah of course we'd love some balance you know we'd like to have some young guys in the program getting better and some veteran guys that have been there but I don't know if you can just set that out I mean our thing in recruiting is we're trying to have talent that can compete and win in the SEC another way to say that is guys that have a chance to play in the NBA um, and so you know high school recruiting is always going to be so important um, I think it's accurate to say it is the bloodline uh um, of the program because it's a chance for guys to be in your program and get better. And um, obviously there's more players, uh, you know, they get a chance to play in the NBA that come throughout the traditional way. In terms of the portal, there's real talent. Um, there, there is NBA talent in the portal. There's experience. Um, international is another thing that we haven't uh, tapped into yet, but we, we will. Uh, we actively are. Junior colleges have been great to us over the years. So it's just all these combination of ways we can get players but we don't just have a model where we got to get two here, two here. We're just trying to get the best players we can to give ourselves a chance to compete at Ole Miss. If you don't mind sharing, um, in your opening statement, you were talking about college ball and you know and how much it means to not just the basketball program, but this this university as a whole. If you don't mind sharing, what was that first, or how special was that first interaction with him? I know obviously you first got here and everything was kind of a whirlwind and all that. Just what struck you immediately when you first met him? Yeah, I, I think um, I'm going to be accurate on this because it's been a few weeks, but um, I, I, I remember it was in this building, and um, I just told him, it's, you know, it's pretty cool when you get to meet the guy uh, who has the statue out, out front, you know, so it's like uh, it doesn't happen a lot in life, but, um, you know, he's a legend, a uh, human being. I mean, he's a pioneer. He's a hero. Uh, he did a lot for a lot of people. His impact is still felt, you know, today, and uh, so that story is is well documented, and um, we've already mentioned, started mentioning it to our players and stuff, and uh, we were looking forward to him being one of the guest speakers with the team because our team kind of arrived late this summer and we didn't all the, have all the pieces. We um, we had a staff meeting about this. We wanted to show Coolers the utmost respect, and we wanted to extend an invitation for him to speak uh, when the whole team was there. I didn't want one of our players to miss it. So um, sad day for for so many reasons um but also again our prayers and thoughts are with his wife and family and grandchildren but like all great people um hopefully you know the celebration can start soon too uh, the other thing um that i kind of educated myself on today and i i knew this but now i know it even more is um when, when you're when you're a hero and a legend like that you know your identity is always going to be the story and what he did to pave the way um, at this university in this state is real. 
Um, but also, and I don't want this to get left behind, he's a really good basketball player too. You're talking about an all-SEC guy, 1,000-point score, impacted winning. So um, he's definitely a guy where you could have a movie about his life, but you could also have a movie about his his specific basketball career. So he's one of the all-time greats, and that's important to us. And uh, this year we're, we're proud of the Tad Pack game. You know, we'll honor Coach Evans' wife who come back in the six years that he coached here championship teams, all those players, assistant coaches, uh, trainers, managers, season ticket holders back in that day that maybe aren't now. We're just inviting everybody back for those six years of, of Ole Miss basketball. And then we look forward to doing this in future years, honoring some of the other, uh, you know, heroes and tenures and, uh, you know, kind of legends. So, um, again, just tough day for everybody in Ole Miss basketball and the athletic department uh, because Coolidge was a hero. Coach, and just one last thing. Um, obviously, bringing bringing in Juju Murray from the portal, a guy who played in a Final Four. And I know you've coached in a Final Four before, but you know, despite you know, obviously he's got the talent. Obviously, but um, just how big is it just to get a Final Four player just on a roster on the guys who haven't played in a Final Four? And just you, are you kind of seeing that impact kind of play itself out kind of in this early stages? Yeah, Juju has some success. You know, they had a, a great run at St. Pete's. He didn't make it to the Final Four, uh, but they played in the Elite Eight. You know, I, th I think he won four games. He played in four games. He won three games and uh, lost the fourth. But to play in four NCAA tournament games as a young freshman, and he was in the rotation and contributing. Then came back ne the next year, which was last season, and, and um, increased his role and played well. So uh, we've talked about Juju before. He's a guy that we have some expectations for. Uh, he's an experienced guard. We're asking a lot of him. Um, he's obviously going to be playing in kind of a different system and a different level than he was at, but his talent is real. So he's off to a good start. Um, you know, similar to a lot of our guys, consistency is kind of the thing. He's shown on any given possession or even any given day um, that he can really compete and succeed at this level. Just got to find a way to be more consistent, you know, whether it be taking care of the ball and decision making and then defensively playing off the ball. So. Uh, he's on an individual journey like every player is, but we do have a lot of confidence in Juju. You know, he's a he's a really good guy. So give you guys some heads up to on the way out. I think the schedule is going to be released uh, any any day very soon, the complete non-conference, and then we'll start getting the details out to the certain games we have. I know the Tad Pad's already come out. We know when the opener is. We've got a couple of destination trips in the first semester, but we appreciate you guys uh, helping us get all the word out here in the next couple of days when the schedule comes up. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.